Hey everyone, it's Sunday, so it's time for story time. This week, I have a really, really cute special guest with me. We have a baby red-footed tortoise. Well, not quite a baby. This one's probably at least a couple to a few years old, but close enough because tortoises are very slow growing and live a very, very long time. So we still kind of consider this little guy a baby. Now, there are some really cool features to know about tortoises. One, their shell is part of their whole skeleton. As I probably described before when I've had the, his bigger counterpart, Fred, our really big tortoise, this shell actually attaches to the vertebrae in his back. And shells are technically a modified uh, section of the rib cage. So it's kind of like how our ribs protect our internal organs, especially our heart and our lungs. These just kind of got modified and became bigger and bigger bones, so it encompassed the entire body. So this shell can't come off of him. It is stuck with him for life. He is born with it and it grows with him. Now, it grows and ha is healthy by what he eats and by his exposure to sunlight. So, he eats really, really healthy things like lots of veggies and dark leafy greens and even some fruits here and there. But he has to have exposure to natural sunlight in order for the calcium to actually work and get really hard and make nice strong bones like we have in our arms. So, there's a special type of radiation that comes from sun called UVB. And UVB radiation helps harden up the calcium so he can have a hard shell and then he can also grow. He also noticed that the front of his feet are very, very plated and hard. They're extra thick scales. This helps kind of create like a shield. So he can't quite fit everything in. You see he can tuck his head in a little bit. And then his arms come up. And so he can put them up like this and kind of block like a boxer would block punches. So he can put his arms up and that stops anything from getting in his way. Now he's got very, very heavy feet, kind of like an elephant or a rhinoceros. It's because he has a heavy body. He's got to use those to help him move that big, heavy shell around whenever he's walking and exploring. Now, these red-footed tortoises are found in South America. So they like kind of like almost jungle-like uh, humidity and temperature. So they're not something we'd find outside here in Michigan. And if they got out, they probably wouldn't do very well when the winter comes. They have to be kept inside. During the winter time, or sorry, during the summertime, we do like to bring them outside though to get natural sunlight and to kind of eat up on some greens. And then when winter comes, they have to be kept inside. So they're a very, very cute tortoise. One of my favorite things is that tortoises actually have beaks. So if you look at the front of his face, he's got a beak very, very similar to a bird. And this helps him chop through his veggies and chop through like roots or anything that's hard. Uh, especially root veggies like carrots and sweet potato and stuff are, have really hard outsides. This beak just chomps right through them. So, like I said, he's young. He's probably at least a couple years old, maybe a little bit older. But he will easily live to be somewhere maybe around 100. Right now, we have Fred and Ginger who are 70 and 80 years old and they aren't showing any signs of slowing down. So hopefully, this guy will live at least that long, if not maybe 100, 120, 150 years. We don't know. Tortoises live exceptionally long times and always tend to outlive their owners. So today, we're going to read a book about two other very slow animals. This one is called Sloth versus Turtle. Uh, this one is by Nick Atkins. He also did the pictures. And this was given to me by my boss, Kirbe. And she said that he's a local uh, artist and local author. So it's very cool to have somebody from the area who wrote a very cool children's book. So without further ado, we will read Sloth vs. Turtle. All right. Hmm. What? He's a sloth. He is a sloth. What is so interesting about that? Nothing. This is our two-toed sloth. He is a very interesting creature. He's so cute. What's his name? Oh, not this guy again. He is a very interesting creature. Yeah, and I'm a ninja. Give me a break. I've eaten leaves that were more interesting than him.
His name is Hoff, and he came all the way from South America. Where you're from? What? Hoff? Mr. Interesting Sloth is named Hoff? Quite the silly name, wouldn't you say? Not like mine. Check it. Lucas. Original, memorable, classy, Lucas. Plus, between me and you, it doesn't sound like a cat with a hairball, you know what I mean? And as long as we're comparing, check out this fancy shell. You know that old saying, animals with shells are always the best? Very true. This bad boy keeps me safe, looks super cool, and it helps me blend in. Camouflage. Ask someone about it. So why is Hoff kind of greenish? I can't win with these people. Good question. Sloths are such slow movers that they actually grow algae in their fur. That helps them blend in and stay safe. He grows algae in his fur? Yuck! Gross! Disgusting! Actually, Lucas over there grows algae on his shell sometimes. We just clean them up with a toothbrush. I do? I thought you just liked brushing my fancy shell. Anyway, it looks like we need to be moving on, so I'm going to list off some very interesting facts about two-toed sloths like Hoff. Psst, can we forget about that whole algae thing so I can get back to my rant? Thanks. All right, smart guy, you have some very interesting facts, do you? Bring it on! Sloths are arboreal. That means they live in trees. Sloths even sleep in trees, as you can see, around 18 hours a day. Well, you got the boar part right, at least. Sloths have ancestors that date back to the Ice Age, though the giant ground sloth looked nothing like Hoff. Ever heard of the Triassic period? Turtles have been around longer than the T-Rex. And lastly, you might not think so, but sloths are excellent swimmers. Yeah, but really? I give up. You hear me? I give up already. Sure, we have our similarities, but if you can't see that I'm a very interesting creature too, then that's your loss. Good night. I just don't get it. I thought everybody liked turtles. Moving along, Lucas over here is a pretty interesting creature too. We moved him in with Hoff while we build his new exhibit. Hmm. Oh, what a cutie. What? He's a turtle! And that is the end. That was sloth versus turtle. So apparently there's some kind of beef between turtles and sloths over who's cutest, has the most algae, and is the slowest. What do you think? Where you come from, there's sloths. I saw sloths where you live. They are pretty interesting creatures, but I'm pretty sure I like turtles and tortoises more. Sloths my lights. Oh no. Well, we're about to end it anyway, so I hope you enjoyed our story. I hope you enjoyed learning about red-footed tortoises and how cute they are and how awesome they are and that there might be some unspoken beef between sloths and turtles. So, hope you learned a lot and we will see you next time. Look at that cute face. Right, buddy? All right. Have a good night, everybody.